What's going on, Aces? Welcome back to the channel. So Kim Solsiak is the latest to weigh in on the Kenya Moore situation. Y'all know she's out doing media tours and promoting her reality show. So she was asked specifically her thoughts on possibly returning to Real Housewives of Atlanta. And then, of course, she mentions Kenya. So let's go ahead and hear what Kim has to say in her own words. And I'll come back with some commentary afterward. We miss you holding that peach, Kim Zolziak. I mean, do you think there's any chance at all you would enter the fray with those group of women again? You know, I've been saying no all day, and then something just hit me about the cast. Like, Portia, who I'm one of my dear friends, she's adorable. I absolutely love her. Um, somebody had mentioned that Phaedra's a possibility. Adore her. She makes me laugh. Kenya's gone. Best decision ever. So, you know, I've been saying no all morning, but... When I thought about Portia, but I was like, well, maybe I could because we do have such a good time together and she's so funny. She might be the medicine that I need, per se. I totally agree with you, but of course, I'm so glad you just mentioned Kenya because I got to ask you, when you got the news that Kenya got the boot mid-season on this new season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Kim Zolciak, what went through your head? Thank God. No, I... I was told by another housewife because I don't watch anything on TV and I was absolutely flabbergasted flabbergasted and disgusted by what she did. It was the lowest of the low, but I've always known how flawed her character was. She talked about my kids in the past inappropriately. She was very disrespectful to me. I don't think it's one thing to get mad and say things or whatever. You don't ever bring somebody's kids into the mix ever. And um, I think it's the best decision ever. She should have left her many years ago. We, we miss you holding that okay. peach. So there you have it in Kim's own words, right? So she said that she wishes that Kenya would have left a long time ago. And Kim, you know, she's not one of my favorite people. I'm just going to be honest with you, especially after watching everything that has been playing out between her and Croy over the last few years. In my opinion, she's the last person that needs to be talking about anyone's character, okay? Because Kenya could easily say that Kim has literally squandered her entire, you know, earnings that she got from The Real Housewives of Atlanta, as well as her own spinoff series, Don't Be Tardy for the Party. And that was an easy check, right? But as soon as they canceled that show, and it ran for a really long time. I think most shows have a typical, um, you know, shelf life of around like six seasons. And I think theirs lasted eight seasons. And once they cut that show, I don't know if it was her gambling addiction, allegedly. I don't know um, if they were just, you know, spending more than they were earning and not saving or investing anything. But from the drama that we've seen, Croy, you know, screaming at the top of his lungs and, you know, about Kim allegedly stepping out. Supposedly she's with um, Chet Hanks, Tom Hanks' son, him and his fake Jamaican accent. <laughs> okay. Chet, Chet is a, me a mess and a half. Um, but, you know, Kim and Croy gambling all up and down, you know, the world owing hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, casinos in the Bahamas and Vegas and, you know, him getting his Rolls Royce um, repossessed and now their house is getting foreclosed on. Like, Kimberly, you have so many issues, um, you know, posting fake messages on Instagram about, you know, Croy and about just... Like the list goes on and on and on. Like if my life, and my life isn't perfect, but I'm just saying if if my life were playing out in the public eye like Kim's and it was just dissolving before my very eyes, I mean, I don't even know if they have enough money to be able to keep a roof over their heads. Like, lady, you have kids, a lot of kids, as a matter of fact, right? But your two oldest girls, you know, they got their boyfriends, fiancés, whatever, and they got the heck up out of there, luckily, right? But 
they have four minor children. And it's unfortunate because now it's gotten to the point where the kids are starting to call the cops because their parents are unable to, you know, resolve their own issues. So she has a lot of mouth and a lot of things to say about Kenya Moore. And, you know, Kenya, good, bad, or indifferent, because I'm not going to kick anybody up while they're down. She's, you know, doing the best that she can, taking care of business, having her, you know, salon. And was was the decision foolish to do what she did to Brit E? Yes, especially at her own salon opening. Absolutely. But I haven't heard any, anything. I haven't heard Kenya say anything about Kim Solciak. And there's a lot that could be said, right? So, yeah, Kim, you know, she's talking about, oh, well, you know, I could possibly go back on the Real Housewives of Atlanta because Phaedra makes me laugh and Portia makes me laugh. First of all, you are not some queen and they're your court jesters, right? Um, secondly, you need that check. Like, let's just keep it all the way a buck. Like, um, whoever this report this uh, blogger or I'm um, not blogger, but podcast person or whoever, he didn't push back at all. I know he was kiki and, and you know, Kim is good for a kiki, but to keep it real, I mean, that's the real reason why she would come back on Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's why she's, she's doing the reality show that she's doing right now, right? She needs the check because not only does she owe the casinos and you know Target and all these other people? No, baby girl, you owe the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. And trust me when I tell you that they will get their money by hook or by crook, either through you you paying the dollar bills, or they will throw you in prison and get sweat, get sweat equity, and they will get prison labor. Y'all better check. Um, I'm telling you that like the house, right? Like the gambling, the house always wins. I'm not a gambler myself. Um, just because I know that the house always wins. And for, in my opinion, it's a very irresponsible way to spend your money. But listen, if you got it, if that's something that, you know, you enjoy, then if you can afford it, right. Big caveat on the, if, um, then by all means have at it. But for me, I don't tend to gamble with my money, but Kim does. And it's unfortunate because she has not only spent her money, she spent her husband's money, she spent her children's money to the point where they're getting foreclosure notices and their car is repossessed and, you know, it's horrific. Like, she absolutely, if, if if Andy Cohen or, you know, Bravo called her today and said, Kim, we want you back on the Real Housewives of Atlanta for, well, I guess Sweet 16 is already filming, but, but you know, season 17, she would jump at the chance. And there's no way anybody could convince me differently. Okay. Kim is full of it. She needs to be working not only on reality TV, she needs multiple jobs, like multiple streams of income in order to get these tax, you know, these tax debts paid um, to get, you know, to keep a roof over her head. I don't know how they have managed to stay in that house for as long as they have. I mean, I don't know if she got a loan from Big Papa, from Candy, from the Tooth Fairy, from whoever, but they have been able to, you know, um, keep the banks and the sheriffs away from kicking them out. I don't know how much longer that's going to happen, but she absolutely would love to be back on The Real Housewives of Atlanta because it is a cute coin and she needs that check. So let's keep it a buck. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys hear what she had to say. You know, Kim is, in my opinion, she, she is someone who is just delusional. Like she has delusions of grandeur. I don't know why her and Croy, and this is as much on Croy as it is Kim, why Croy didn't take that money, put it in a tr one for a, a trust for the kids, right? To set up a college fund for the kids, put it in investments, stocks, bonds, etc. Buy that house outright, 
because they had the money. If you guys are gallivanting all over the world, you know, in the Bahamas gambling, no, that house should have been paid for first, okay? That car should have been paid for. Like before you spend another dime on anything else, make sure that you at least have a roof over your head. Like that is the most asinine thing. I cannot, like that is the easiest thing money in the world. You have a, a television show just filming you, just living your life. And instead of taking that money and putting it in investments, they could have bought, you know, rental properties. Um, you know, they could have bought apartment buildings. They could have bought so many things that would give them a positive return on their investment. But instead, Kim and Croy, go to Vegas, go to the Bahamas, go to all these different places, even online, because Croy put the receipts online. And she literally gambled their future away. Like that is that it just it blows my mind every time I think about it. But yeah, um Kim has a lot to say on Kenya, but it's like, you know, <laughs> She's doing a lot of finger pointing for somebody who owes the IRS millions of dollars. Those are my thoughts. You guys, let me know yours in the comment section. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will talk with you in the next one. Take care, aces. Bye.